Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's July 8, 2018, and I just heard something crazy coming from a doctor talking about stopping the monsoon rains to save the kids in the cave in Thailand. And I really want to break this down for you. Uh, shout out to my homeboy Dominic Marama from weathermodificationhistory.com for pointing this video clip out to me. Um, let's get right to it. So everything you're about to see is open source, free of charge, and creative commons. Um, all I ask is that you support my work uh, by giving a monthly donation on Patreon or a one-time donation on PayPal. Um, and many of you know that I'm battling with Graves' disease. I hope that you guys will continue to hit up my GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe.com slash FixMyThyroid. Um, but let's get right to the article. It's already published. It's on ClimateViewer.com right now. Uh, Thai Cave Rescue Cloud Seeding to Stop Monsoon Rains. And, you know, subtitle, Iran Claims Cloud Theft, China Stops Olympic Rains, and Moscow Washed Out Chernobyl Fallout with Cloud Seeding. So apparently, a lot of people don't know that cloud seeding, though it's one of the oldest weather modification technologies and been in 1946, that it can be used to shut off rain as well. So I want to give you guys the big picture on this and, uh, you know, let's, let's do this thing right now. Um, all the links and references uh, that you're about to see are in this article. I hope that you will go through them. They're pretty epic going to come back to those in just a second all right so over here uh the video is Thai cave rescue window narrows before heavy rains and they're interviewing a guy um as a doctor peter lynn um cbc's chief uh medical advisor and he let something drop at the end that really surprised me uh, i'm just going to play the tape just a, a couple seconds of it and I wish we could do what they did in Beijing, which was they seeded the clouds to get rid of the rain uh, for the Olympics. So if we can seed these monsoon clouds, I don't know if that's possible. And if we can hold off the rain, then that pressure of the next two days is off. And then that gives the pump some time to actually drop the level enough that they can float them out. And that would well blow me down there's a doctor who knows something about cloud seeding and weather modification history um that's pretty rare nowadays uh especially considering if we go back to our article i um you know just recently covered this in my last article about um iran accuses israel of cloud theft weather modification in the cia cuban rain embargo i hope you guys will check that one out as well um where a, a brigadier general from Iran said joint teams from Israel and one other neighboring and one of the neighboring countries make clouds entering to Iran barren. And um, interestingly enough, over on RushLimbaugh.com, he said some things that were interesting to me. And you can see the article right here. It's at RushLimbaugh.com. Um, you know. You'd think that the guy would know more about this sort of thing, but let's just read his quotes. The only quasi-expert in clouds that I know is Dr. Roy Spencer, the official climatologist here at the EIB Network, University of Alabama, Huntsville, and he's written extensively on clouds and water vapor and their effects on greenhouse gases, CO2, and climate change, but even Dr. Spencer will teal, tell you, steal a cloud? You can't even make one. Um... And I'd like to respond to Rush. You know, planes are making clouds every day and we know exactly how they're making them. And a link to climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter and my artificial clouds articles on chemtrails, Cirrus Clouds, that sort of phenomenon. But regardless, he had a caller to the show and later on he responded to the caller named Al by saying, I know of efforts to seed clouds to make it rain, but the but the fact is out there, Al, that there are still massive droughts over which no we have no control whatsoever. I'm also trying to figure out how actual theft of a cloud, if we're going to actually take seriously discuss this, how would that happen, Al? How would you? How would it, the Israelis steal a cloud that the Iranians have manufactured? Um, so, uh, Mr. Rush Limbaugh. 
You're clearly talking to the wrong meteorologist. 50% of them don't even know what cloud seeding is or really don't understand it at all. And I'd point you to uh, two recent videos that um, Dominic created. Um, you know, weather, meteorologists respond to weather modification history. It's about nine minutes long. Watch it. It's freaking hilarious. And then uh, part two, which is also about nine, ten minutes long. And what you're going to see is you know, that these guys really don't know much about weather modification history at all. It's a, it's pretty well, funny. I mean, at least I've never heard of that. That actually might be a good question for me to research. I honestly don't know. Hey, maybe huh? she's watching this morning. I don't think they actually do practice cloud seeding in Medford. I feel like cloud seeding usually... Wait, who is this? I don't know. Weather modification history. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who yeah. is this? I don't know. Weather modification history. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, these meteorologists, they, they have no freaking clue. I don't know what the curriculum is at the meteorology schools, and I certainly don't know what it is at Huntsville, Alabama, um, your homeboy at the EIB network. But clearly you're talking to the wrong meteorologist. So you can talk to this meteorologist, and I'll give you the history. So um, in my previous article, Iran accuses Israel of cloud theft. Weather warfare and CIA Cuban rain embargo. We go through a lot of this stuff, a whole bunch of links on, you know, Ahmadinejad saying that they were stealing their rain. Well, the, the CIA did this in 1976, but the seeding near Cuba was to cause less rain, not more. It was supposed to squeeze rain out of clouds before they reached the island. You might say we tried to embargo rain clouds. That's what the doctor's talking about in the video. In fact, the doctor was specifically referring to what China did. Um, and he said, you know, I wish we could do, um, to save the kids in the cave, maybe we could shut off the monsoon rains by doing some cloud seeding. That'd be epic, right? Um, and, you know, because they did it in Beijing, and here's exactly what they're talking about. Um, Beijing, to prevent rain over a roofless 91,000 seat Olympic Stadium that Beijing natives have nicknamed Bird's Nest, the city's branch of the National Weather Modification Office itself, a department of the China Meteorological Administration, has prepared a three-stage program for the 2008 Olympics in this August. First, Beijing's Weather Modification Office will track the region's weather via satellites, radar, and a supercomputer. Um, purchased from Big Blue last year and blah, blah, blah. Then, using two aircraft and an array of 20 artillery and rocket launch sites from around Beijing, the city's weather engineers will shoot the sp and spray silver iodide and dry ice into un incoming clouds that are still far enough away that they can r the rain can be flushed out before they reach the stadium. Ooh, so that's how you steal somebody's rain. Um, you can use cloud seeding to make it rain. You can use cloud seeding to make it rain before clouds get to a location, and then there's no water left to you know fall, or you overseed the cloud, as it's called by scientists who actually know what they're talking about, um, where you put too many particles into the cloud for droplets to form large enough to fall. So if you have too many seeds in a cloud, you can shut off rain. And, you know, likewise, if you dump most of the water out of the cloud before it reaches a target location, then you have also stolen the rain. You shut it off before it got there. That's what the Dr. Lin in the video we watched at the beginning of this was talking about. That's what Beijing um, in China was doing for the Olympics. Finally, any rain-heavy clouds that near the bird's nest will be seeded with chemicals to shrink droplets so they so that rain won't fall until those cloud clouds have passed over overseeding so they're going to try to cloud seed to make it rain before it got to the olympic stadium and any clouds that get close to the stadium they're going to overseed them to death so that they don't drop any rain that's how you create a drought you create drought conditions you shut off rain with cloud seeding whoa -ho -ho. um Quote, we use a coolant made from liquid nitrogen to increase the number of droplets by decreasing their average size. That's what I just said, overseeding. As a result, the smaller droplets are lo less likely to fall and precipitation can be reduced. 
that's how you do it, Rush. So I hope that he'll hear this. That'd be great. Um, but that's how the Chinese did it back in 2008. But wait, there's more. Um, let's talk about how they did it in Russia in 1986, whenever the Chernobyl meltdown occurred, and how the Russians... Um, didn't want radioactive rainfall in Moscow, so they screwed everybody in Belarus. Um, and what they basically did was they flew planes and shot artillery shells to, quote, wash out radioactive particles drifting towards densely populated cities. Right there. So... This is a fact. More than 4,000 square miles of Belarus were sacrificed to save the Russian capital from toxic, radio toxic radioactive material. The wind direction was moving from west to east, and the radioactive clouds were threatening to reach the highly populated areas of Moscow, Varenz, Nizhny, Novgorod, and Yaroslav. Slavl, um, he, said, he told Science of Superstorms at BBC Documentary uh, to be broadcast today. If the rain had fallen in those cities, you would have been. It would have been a catastrophe for millions. The area where my crew was actively influencing the clouds was near Chernobyl, not only in the 30 kilometer zone, but a distance of 50, 70, even 100 kilometers. Um, you know, in the wake of the catastrophic meltdown of the Chernobyl reactor, people in Belarus reported heavy black colored rain around the city of Gomel. Uh, shortly beforehand, aircraft had been spotted circling the sky, ejecting colored material behind them. Moscow has always denied that cloud seeding took place after the accident, but last year on the 20th anniversary of the disaster, Major Grushin was among those honored for bravery. He claimed he received the award for flying cloud seeding missions during the Chernobyl cleanup. A second Soviet pilot, who asked not to be named, also confirmed the program's makers that cloud seeding operations took place as early as two days after the explosion. Alan Flowers, a British scientist who was one of the Western scientists allowed into the area to examine the extent of radioactive fallout around Chernobyl, said the populations in Belarus were ex was exposed to radiation doses 20 to 30 times higher than normal as a result of the rainfall causing intense radiation poisoning in children. Mr. Flowers was expelled from Belarus in 2004 after claiming that Russians that Russia had seeded the clouds. He said the local population say there was no warning before these heavy rains and radioactive fallout arrived. So, there's a second case, well documented, of Russia trying to prevent rainfall from hitting Moscow. And you can even see it on Climate Viewer 3D at climateviewer.org. Link in the article, picture, just click it. And what you'll see is right over here on this side is where the meltdown occurred. And then there's this huge chunk of radioactive fallout right here. That's where the rainfall occurred. That's where the cloud seeding occurred. That explains why there are two very hot zones pretty far apart. Um, as you can see, there's 20 to 30 kilometers, uh, 20, you know, 30, maybe 50. He said 50 and 70. It lines up exactly with what the guy is saying. You can see it right there yourself. So here's the meltdown. Here's where the rainfall occurred. And there is Moscow. So this is not, you know, hokey. This is real. Um, all facts. You can't argue with these facts. Um, you know, cloud seeding to shut off rainfall has a long history. Um, another article on that, how Rush, uh, Russia stopped Chernobyl cloud. We conclude our series featuring Dr. Beryulev, they spelled his name wrong, report on Russia's weather modification projects, and they go into all the details there. Um, I got a couple of them highlighted in the article. And you can see right here, uh, Russia stopped Chernobyl cloud April 21st, 2008. Um, the methods to destroy developing convective clouds differ in, 
in intensity from cumulus congestus to cumulonimbus using the dynamic technique, blah, blah, blah. The seeding of 30 kilograms or more of coarse dispersion powders per cloud top resulted in the destruction of single cell isolated storms within 10 to 20 minutes and the frontal ones within 30 to 35 minutes. And it was to prevent undesirable clouds of precipitation from reaching it. All of the procedures and technical aids described above were employed successfully in activities associated with eliminating the consequences of the Chernobyl disaster and improving weather conditions in Moscow. Dates they occurred. So this was straight from the doctor's mouth, and luck would have it, Dominic also sent me this paper, which it confirms there's the guy's name. Uh, Buryulev. Weather Modification by Aircraft Cloud Seeding. He's the head of the Department of Cloud Physics and Weather Modification Central Aerological Observatory in the Russian Federation. So, I mean, let's tie a bow on this. They said, the, the doctor at the beginning, in our first video, he says, why don't we use some cloud seeding to shut off the monsoon rains so that we can pump the water out so that we can float the kids out of the cave in Thailand and save their lives because they did it in Beijing. They did do it in Beijing, and we know how. They did it in Russia, and we know how. They, Iran claims that people are stealing their rain, and we know how. It's called cloud seeding. So I hope this has been an informative video. I hope that you guys will continue to support my work. Um, please do so by giving a monthly donation on Patreon, um, giving a one-time donation on PayPal. And, you know, like I said, you know, earlier in the video, I am battling Graves' disease. And, you know, um, some of the treatments I'm doing, you know, and the, the dietary changes are very expensive. So if you guys could please hit me up on my GoFundMe, I'd appreciate that. GoFundMe.com slash FixMyThyroid. Um, this is the information. Information is power. I hope that you guys will share this information widely. Um, and understand that cloud seeding is not just some benign, you know, benevolent, um, you know, only beneficial thing. Cloud seeding has been used as a weapon of war since Operation Popeye in Vietnam. It was used over Cuba. Um, it was used to shut off rain at the Olympics. It was used to shut off rain in Chernobyl. And, you know, now they're talking about using it to shut off rain to save these kids in a cave. So, you know, cloud seeding... Is the only technology used as a weapon? Yeah. My wife just popped her head in and said, Cloud seeding is the only technology that has ever been used as a weapon of warfare. Um, so let's keep that in mind and understand that this is a yin-yang um, scenario. It can be used for good. It can be used for evil. Um, and it can certainly be used to shut off rainfall. So... I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I hope that you'll spread it around. Um, and please continue to support my work. And, you know, when you're doing this, just remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember... It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.